Well, hello again. It is Paul from Ski Instructor Academy. I'm here with Andy from Snow Camps Europe. And we are crawling and trolling through the, all the uh, comments that we uh, get and trying to tackle a few. So we're going to generally put a couple together here, um, Andy. I'm going to look at money that a ski instructor can make. But later, uh, before that, we're going to talk about first, quickly, the investment that you have to put in yep. to get to be a ski instructor, etc. Mm -hmm. What do you reckon? Well, um, there's different factors that can make it, it yeah it can make it more expensive or less expensive one one of the one of the main things is which association you go with um and how far up the ladder you want to get because obviously if you want to go all the way to level four it's going to cost you more than if you just want to get to level two and then not progress any further also what's going to come into play is if you go on to a, a pre-course if you go and do some training beforehand and whether you do a training course before you level one you level two you level three and you level four um, I, I think i can in, you know interject there a bit because in this modern day what i see is people between 18 and let's say 30 they want to do everything they can to get as high as possible through the ranks, as quick as possible, mm -hmm. and as cost effectively as possible, and at the cost, without them realizing, of experience. I do see older people invest in their idea of what their career might be, you know, when they're in their 50s and 60s as a ski instructor. They want to do as much training as possible, as much high quality and high cost training doesn't bother them. They tend to be wanting to invest in themselves because they know that it's not just about getting to the level fast, but it's about having the most knowledge at that level. So in other words, mm -hmm. as we recognize all the time, we can have level fours that are literally 10 times worse than a level one. Yeah. The level one guy is much better instructor. He's invested in his uh, qualification, but more importantly, in his, in his life as a person. Yeah, he has a knowledge. lot, yeah, his knowledge there mm -hmm. just outstretches the level four guy. Mm -hmm. So don't be, you know, thinking that a, a lady or a man that has this high level qualification for is the right person as a coach because the the ski system doesn't have how can i put this without sounding derogatory um, ski associations tend not to have like the discipline of a doctorate or something you know they're not like trying to make sure everybody understands every parameter about the human body the human mind the human the concepts of coaching and teaching the concepts of skiing they're really just trying to tick some boxes to say oh they can do a wedge turn or a power plow turn they can now do a parallel turn and sort of explain it they can do a bit of carving or short turns and they can do this and that's then boxes ticked mm -hmm. and let's add a little sprinkle of how you teach yeah. um, and a little sprinkle of this and now you're a level four um, yeah, I've said this before, tend to, to you know, in my experience, um, no matter what I'm doing in life, I tend to trust the guy with the grey hair as opposed to the young whippersnapper who can fly down the piste. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we've, co we've covered that off on, on a previous video, haven't we? But yeah. um, get, getting back to the cost, um, as you say, it can be as inexpensive or as expensive as you want, really. It's how much you want to invest. And on top of that, as Andy said, on associations has a bearing on it. Um, you know, it is well known that some of the European qualifications um, are cheaper to get through the ranks than, for example, it would be with a BASE or a, a qualification like the Irish Association, where there's a lot of modules involved, a lot of travel, because obviously they don't, you know, you gen generally find yourself traveling to ski resorts and then having to pay accommodation. And then if you add on some extra training, so if you are moving into your level three, I don't know what the situation is now in, let's say, a course... Um, in Basie, for example, you used to have to do a race qualification as well, etc. Mm -hmm. Most people would have to train to get their understanding of racing because most people haven't done ski racing, for example. And it, it, it's still a, a bit of a, I find it a bit weird because all that effort it takes for people to do the Euro test, for example, and all the, the problems that come with the Euro test, i.e. injury and etc. well, as you well know, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> is would that time and effort not be better spent in actually making a better ski instructor from the biomechanical point of view, the mechanics of skiing, for what they're likely to do with 99.99999% of their guests, as opposed to doing a, a ridiculous race for what? 
for what reason are we doing the race? Oh, we're doing it because some people can pass and go. Well, of course, it's really, it's a, it's a, it's a threshold. It shows somebody's got the capabilities. No, it does not. Um, my best trainers are definitely not my Euro test trainers. That's how I see it. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, everyone knows my thoughts on the Euro test. Partly because I just think it's ridiculous and partly because I've wrecked my knee trying to achieve it. So, yeah. Um, and again, yeah. And, and again, if you are, if you are, this is this is a aspect of the exams that can swallow a lot of money. I spent quite a lot of money on race camps trying to get to the level that it would take to pass that race, and that money would have been, as you said, w w way better spent on other things. Um, yeah. because, because you've invested in trying to get to that 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 line, that tick box. Mm. When once you had done that the benefit ratio would have not been as great if that time had been spent in learning to do variable terrain, learning about biomechanics or learning about coaching techniques and standards yeah. and learning how to deal with difficult uh, people who are difficult to coach or, you know, Sports psychology, etc. anything yeah. really. We could list a million subjects, you yeah. know, you might as well read the Quran. So it's like, this is the issue is that don't get me wrong the what this euro test favors generally is people who are locals who are born in ski resorts and have been doing this all their life yep. who it doesn't favor is somebody who comes into ski instructing as a sabbatical or later in life where they want to do it as a retirement job and all of a sudden they look and go well that level is never achievable mm -hmm. you know i'm never going to get there don't worry about that because the level you want to achieve is your expertise can fall in a different area. You may not be to go through the giant slalom course as quick as him, but what you can do is you can improve your psychology, your sports psychology, your mechanics, your etc. You can improve your communication skills as a coach. That is valuable. That's valuable to me. Um, whereas somebody who can go quick with their guests is not a valuable ski trainer. Mm -hmm. So the cost of it, anyway, we can, we can say, yeah, it can go from 14,000 um, for somebody who wants to do it on the cheap right the way through to the level four with certain associations. And it can cost you well in excess of 40,000 if you want to go with other associations and literally tick every module box and invest a little bit in it. Um, this is the issue. What Andy said at the start is probably the most sensible thing is get yourself to a level two because really after that, it's a little bit to do with ego and you know it's not as necessary as you think financially you, you, the extra wage you're going to get to go into a level three you're probably already lost trying to get from a two to a three <laughs> yeah, quite, quite possible yeah quite possible so, and, that, and that takes us on to the second part of this is someone's asked um and it is is it reese reese v is that how you say that R-H-Y-S-E-V. He's asked, how much money can you save working a ski season in Austria as a level two teacher? So someone actually replied, it depends how much beer you drink, um, which is going to be a big factor, I would expect. Um, but a level two teacher is probably going to earn between 1,000 and 1,500, depending on where they work, um, depending on your ski school, if you have ski school accommodation. They you're, normally... you're reading a comment here. You're not saying this. That wasn't your version. You're reading his yeah, reply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So reply. I'm right. saying the reply basically the reply says, do, do, how yeah. much beer are you going to drink? That's and very uh, sweeping statement. Either yeah. way, not loads. And then yeah. he says, if you're working consistently, you're going to be getting 1,000 to 1,500 euros a month, which... In Austria, um, there is a standard contract um, that is given to all level two ski instructors. Um, it's, it can't be adjusted in any way. You know, it's a set contract. After that, obviously, there could be people might get more because they've been there longer at the ski school bonuses. I'll tell you the story is simple is when I'm dealing with people who are coming to do their first season, I'm very honest and say it's an investment. Mm -hmm. Do not expect a to make any money or save any money as such because as this guy points out as well he says like it depends how much you work of course it does and that goes from season to season ski school to ski school you don't know what the snow is going to be you don't know if it's going to be a pandemic you don't know any of those parameters like how nature is going to affect that season secondly um ski schools they're just different some ski schools can put somebody and make them busy from 
day one to the last day of the leave. In other ski schools, they'll have people sitting around for 90% of the season doing no work. Yeah, and if you're not getting, if you're not doing any work, you're not getting any pay. Which is the problem that we can come back to um, about Brexit, for example, Andy. Just to add back into that, is <laughs> the reason again. ski schools don't want to employ English people this season is because if they did employ you, they are forced, therefore, not to deregister you. They have to keep you employed and paid no matter what mm -hmm. from the start to the end of the season. Now, with an EU passport holder, they could deregister and re-register people through the season to save costs. So if they know two weeks in January are quiet, they'd go, hey, Andy, go off and ski for yourself a bit, have a bit of a chill, yeah. we'll, we'll get you back in February. But yeah, but what that actually means is you're not going to get paid for the next two weeks. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. You're not yeah. getting any but, money. But, but they, they dress it up just as Paul dressed it up. Go yeah. and have a ski for two weeks. Have it, enjoy yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so this is another reason why they don't want to employ people who require visas, i.e. third nation people. Whereas with the countries in Europe, you can deal with them slightly more flexible, a lot more flexibility in dealing with them. Financially, what you earn is fixed from, and look, you hear different stories. You know, some of you go, oh, but you're Make, I don't know, 25 or 30 euros an hour in this France or in this place in Switzerland. Be careful about all those stories. Um, I think the guys generally on the right um, area of saying, look, especially first season ish, you know, you can say that if you did work a full four week period of that month, um, and remember, when we say work, most ski inst instructors are either doing five, possibly six days, and they are work as in nine till three mm -hmm. in the afternoon. So it's a very short day. You might make a thousand to one thousand five hundred euros in your hand. The big problem what people don't realize is, as um, a lot of people found out later on, is you get heavily taxed um, in most countries because they don't know what your tax bracket is. So they just tax you at basic rate. Mm -hmm. And they rely upon the fact that 90% of these people will not claim that tax back because yeah. it's a very complicated process or they make it yeah, they a make very it complicated. complicated process. Yeah. Um, and when I first claimed my tax back after about four years of not doing it, because I didn't know how to do it until eventually met an Austrian who could walk me through it, I think I got back about three and a half thousand euros mm -hmm. um, that was just lost in taxes that I didn't need to pay. Yeah. So because you're losing it, and this is the issue is, as soon as you've worked here in Austria, even if it is for four, four months of one year as a gap year, you actually have a pension here. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, okay, maybe one, one euro a month, yeah. but you have a pension here. You have rights, you know, for that. Um, so there's all these, these hidden factors. Um, but the basic thing is you're not going to get rich being a ski instructor. Um, yes, if you're in the industry, like, you know, like, let's take you, Andy, you know, you've been in the industry um, the second time round for... Well, what is it, 10 years? 10 years, yeah. 10 years. You know how to work and manipulate the system now. Mm -hmm. but, you know, that was something that you did really quick because you're good at manipulating the system. You know how to do that with other jobs, with a life. Yeah. But if you're 1920, you're probably going to not suss on to the, the tricks, you know, yeah. where to get the extra bonus from, mm -hmm. how to get a bit of commission, how mm -hmm. to, you know, where do I get that extra, that 10 euros matters, that 5 euros matters. Yes, it does in a ski instructor wage. And I, I just as an add-on, because, you know, I don't teach anymore, but um, please tip your ski instructor if he's good, because he yes. doesn't get paid well. Yes. Like, it's one job where you can tip him. They're getting, they're getting a crap wage. And I know you might have just paid, you know, for a private, I don't know what it is, 200 and... 235 a day, something like that. 235 a for a private. Yeah. Look, even if you give the lad five euros, I know 10 would be better, but if you give him five, honestly, he will massively appreciate that five euros because that's, yeah. a, that's a beer, you know, or whatever, for the end of the day. Um, and don't buy them alcohol. Don't buy them a bottle of beer at the end of the week or a bottle of whiskey, whatever, at the end of the week. Give them the money instead, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, because that's what they're begging for. They need a few extra quid to get some new gloves to get... Because that's the other thing. All your, all your equipment... Yeah, you get a uniform, but they're not giving you, like, gloves, goggles, no. helmets. How many goggles have you scratched from your client? Yeah. Like, you know, who's bumped into you or poked a ski pole in your face or yeah. something. And you look at, you'll get, a, you'll get a, a new ski teacher will turn up this November. They'll buy a new pair of skis. By the middle of February, them skis are wrecked. Yeah, stamped all over. Kids yeah. trampling on them, people skiing over them, etc., etc. I remember my first season, um, 45... 
pounds. It, uh, it was shillings, but it equated to forty-five pounds. I got forty-five pounds a week. Now, granted, I had my food, and my board was paid for, and it was all school groups. Every week was an English school group, and every week was a bottle of schnapps at the end of the week. Mm. And I could have so much. I could have done way more better with. 10 pounds at the end of each week rather than a bottle of schnapps because you just don't drink the schnapps you know no. um and it's it's great thought and the kids have all put their their money in together to buy you that bottle of schnapps but it's give kind of money. like just give, give me the money. the money give me the money please um, give me the money <laughs> and uh yeah and, and that my first season back then i didn't save a penny on that yeah. season um and that's answering the question isn't it you can see how desperate we are for the money at that stage and don't like if you've got this weird um thought in your head that you're going to go off and do a course with anyone and they're telling you you're going to make some money out of it just be a little bit wary that said there are exceptions mm -hmm. to the rule mm -hmm. and a good exception with us is what we find and look you're talking to the world's biggest ski instructor and snowboard training company so we know we train thousands of people and what we found is that if you do need to make money and you want to pay your course back japan basically do a course here in austria train get all your level now why am i telling you first to do a course in austria and then fly in december to japan to work well because there's a lot of companies that will try and con you into saying ah go to japan and do the training in japan and be an instructor thereafter what they failed to mention is there's no snow in japan mm -hmm. no it's very rare for japan to have snow in time for you to do enough training to make you good at your job mm -hmm. before the japanese ski schools want you because they want you about the seventh or eighth the very latest because they do a lot of coordination which is great the ski school does do a lot of effort to make you good at understanding the guest However, how on earth are you supposed to do an exam on December the 1st or 2nd, for example, or even earlier, the end of November, mm. when actually there's sometimes not even a flake of snow at that stage? Mm. So what we find better is, first you come to Austria, you do your level one and two, so now you're ahead of everybody. When you fly out on December the 1st, you're now flying out as a fully fledged and equipped ski instructor when you arrive there and the ski school can absorb you into their coordination program and to come back to the point is we find that people who go to japan intelligently can actually come away with money you can actually turn around and say they'll get paid between two and two and a half thousand <laughs> euros a month even as a fledgling instructor yep. so that would pay for that course you've done and allow you to have up some spending money and the whole season can cost you nothing. So my recommendation, you know, cost is an issue is do our Japanese courses, which, okay, because of COVID this year are seriously affected, but next year they won't be because you can train and then you can go off and actually invest in your training time as opposed to doing what companies might encourage you to do, which is a shit in a shaved like literally course where they want you to come arrive in Japan and two days later start an exam. Mm. How on earth do you have the experience to actually start an exam that quick? And I'd question the fact that if people are passing them exams, I'm not so sure suspect, about that. Bit suspect. Yes. What's quite funny is when everyone turns up in November for courses, you can quite quickly identify the person who is going to leave with no money at the end of the season. <laughs> and you can pick out the one or two that you're saying, well, they might leave with a few euros in their pocket. Yeah. Why is that the best? Because ski schools also identify who's got a bit of this yes. in their head a bit and yeah. actually think, hey, this guy's good. Yep. Because let's face it, Andy, how easy was it for you to be good? It wasn't, the, it was so easy because there's so much crap. Yeah. Like there's so many people turning up pissed, late, um, you know, unreliable, mm -hmm. not good at the job, not connecting with the client, you know, coming in and, and having their group go from 10 to 9 to 7. To yep. by the, Over the week. Yeah, yep. by the third day, they're down to like the last two people. What the hell happened to the other eight people? That boss looks at that and goes, this guy's obviously not good with groups. Mm. You know, he can't cope. Whereas, you know, if you've got a group of 10 and you finish with 12, you go, where <laughs> the hell did these extra two pop up from? Yeah, yeah they've come from the other guy's group who uh, yeah. they won't ski with anymore. So you are rewarded if you're good at your job yep. there's no doubt about it yep. and unfortunately in this day and age there's that sideline if you're going to work within europe where languages become an issue as opposed to if you're working in i know it sounds weird in japan because japan's generally english you know you're just mm -hmm. teaching english people and um, how many english people are here in europe to be taught 
is obviously less mm -hmm. in the sense of there's a lot of instructors whose second languages are English and they're very good at English anyway. So the ski school thinks, I might as well have that person who speaks, um, let's say, Swiss or Danish or Polish than, and their second language is English as opposed to have an English person who's very good at English, mm -hmm. but they don't really have any control over a second language. Yeah. Um, and that's, that becomes an issue as well. So the skill sets needed to be an instructor will reflect your wage. Mm. basically is how much how many extra bonuses can you see so for example one of the big bonuses would be oh you know if i am with a ski school that has a partnership with let's say a ski hut or a ski shop yeah there's a good way to make money yeah straight away because that can make you more money in a day mm -hmm. than you could have made from your ski instructor because there's some guy tells you oh i'd love to buy a set of skis and boots and you go off great do you mind if i take you in because i can get the, the yeah. recommendation and the, that's how you can start adding to that really poor wage and then in years you get more money because you get good yeah yep yeah. it um yeah you become you become more than a ski instructor you become more more than Absolutely. a ski instructor that, that's the big issue you cannot afford to be a ski instructor anymore yeah you've got to be this host haven't you yeah that is the most important thing so there you go there are ways that you would be able to leave with some money at the end of the season but on the first season chances are you might just break even i've done it again haven't i mm. <laughs> as andy finishes off he starts to fall asleep so he just backs off from the keep mic. moving away from the mic we will see you on oh, here on you in the next one thanks very much for joining us and leave your comments below